This is part two of a special Mouthpiece Monday dedicated to dive instructors trying to find and secure their dream job. Now, on last week's Mouthpiece Monday, I talked about how to prepare your resume, what to include and what not to include in order to impress a potential employer. If you didn't see last week's Mouthpiece Monday, I suggest you go back and watch it first. Otherwise, what I'm talking about today isn't going to make a lot of sense. I'll put the link up there. Go ahead, go watch it. I'll wait. In this week's episode, we're going to talk about how to hunt for, target and secure Secure that dream job like a maverick renegade. We're starting right now. Welcome ladies and gentlemen to another Divers Ready Mouthpiece Monday. My name is James. It is so great to see all of your smiling faces. If you're new to this channel, please consider to hit that subscribe button and click the little bell icon so you never miss any of our content. On this channel, I make hints and tips videos to help share my expertise of the diving world and make you a better diver. So hopefully you've watched part one now and that helped you to get together a professional scuba diving resume. Now we need to talk about how to narrow your search down so you're not just carpet bombing every dive center in the entire world with your resume and people are sick to death of seeing your name but actually picking the specific places where you'd like to work and making sure that you put your best foot forward with those operations it irks me a little bit when i see people put out we'll work anywhere no you won't no you won't work anywhere you're not going to spend three thousand dollars on flights to get to a job that's going to pay you ten dollars an hour and that either you might hate or that might fire you the very next day that's not what smart people do so you need to be targeted and you need to be specific in finding out the exact operations where you want to work. My first tip for helping you do that is to make a list of what your personal development goals are. Congratulations on passing your IE and being a newly qualified instructor, but that's not the end of your professional development. A good dive instructor is one that's always learning. You hear me say that a lot on this channel. Certainly, I'm always learning. I'm always looking to add skills and, and practice and refine the ones that I've got. So what are your developmental goals? What do you want to learn next? For example, if you're looking to get your tech diving on, then I would strongly suggest that you apply to dive centers that support technical diving, and that's a, a nurturing environment where you can learn those skills. If you're looking to learn underwater photography, you're gonna want to go and work at a dive center that has either a, an illustrious underwater photographer working there, or at least has the facilities to help you develop your skills. So take a piece of paper and write down your top three developmental goals. What do you want to learn next? Next, you're gonna to wanna to consider what kind of dive operation you wanna work for. Do you wanna work for a traditional dive shop, boat, charter operation? Do you wanna work for more of a resort style? Do you wanna work for liverboards? Do you wanna work on an expedition ship? Do you wanna work for private yachts? There's lots of different types of operations within diving that all require a similar skill set. The third step in narrowing down where you want to work is what geographical area do you want to base yourself in? Now, as I already said, part of that is gonna be financially constrained to where can you afford to actually get to? Where does it make sense to spend money to travel to? But there's other factors to consider as well. As I said in episode one, your nationality comes into play. Where can you legally work? Where can you get a work permit for? Also consider the languages that you speak and where are those languages beneficial? Think about where people who speak your language go to dive. For example, if you can teach scuba diving in Japanese, good for you, I'm very jealous, you're gonna to wanna to focus your search on the Pacific Islands that receive a lot of Japanese tourists. If you speak French, you've got the Mediterranean, you've got the French West Indies, Vietnam. So being able to use those skills is gonna make you more valuable to dive operations. And then that also ties in with point number one about what your developmental goals are. Some areas of the world are just better to learn certain things. Certainly here in South Florida, we've got a very strong tech scene and we've got a very strong wreck diving scene. So if those are areas of interest for you, this is great. So you've got your developmental goals down, you know what type of organization you want to work for and you know what region of the world you want to work in. So that's already narrowed the search down quite a lot, but let's go deeper. Let's start to look at dive centers that you would actually want to work for. And this is where we need to turn to our old friend, Google Maps. So let's say for argument's sake, you want to further your underwater photography skills. And let's say that you're particularly interested in working in Indonesia and that you qualify for an Indonesian work permit. And Indonesia is a big country, let's go even further and say that you're into macro photography, uh, muck diving, and you're really interested in the Lembe Strait, which if you didn't know already is absolutely world-class for photography and muck diving. Narrow in your search area and then type in these simple words. Now that's gonna bring up a list of operations, but how do you know from that far 
out which of these operators is reputable and which one you'd actually like to work for. Well, the first thing I would do is visit each one's website. You can tell a lot about a company from a website, not just from its marketing point of view and how it projects itself, but also is the website modern? Is it up to date? Are they in touch with social media? What's the quality of their verbiage? What's the quality of their photography? That will already tell you a lot about the quality of the operation. If they haven't updated their website since dial-up was a thing, that would lead me to believe that the operators, owners, managers of that particular operation were probably a bit backwards thinking. If they have a sleek, modern, socially integrated website, that would tell me that they're forward thinking and that would attract me to work for them. Once you've gone to each of their websites and you've narrowed down the ones that particularly support photography or in areas that you're really interested in and you've got that shortlist, the next thing you can do is go hit the forums, go hit the chat rooms, and find people that have dove there. TripAdvisor and Yelp reviews are, of course, admittedly biased, but it will give you a good sense of how they're performing. Just don't read too much into it. I mean, don't forget that somebody on TripAdvisor gave the Grand Canyon a one-star review. The Grand Canyon. The Grand Canyon. But on a high level, it'll give you a general idea. Or if you happen upon instructors who have worked there previously, you can ask them for their experience, but of course that will be biased. So now we've gone from having the whole world and all the dive centers in it, down to just a small handful of places that you're considering to apply. How do you put your best foot forward with each one of those individual shops? Well, first and foremost, you want to personalize your application to each one of them. What you absolutely do not want to do is write one cover letter, attach your CV to it, and send it to all six. I've seen it done, it's not a good look. You're performing surgery here to extract your dream job. Use a scalpel, not a sledgehammer. So personalize your application to each one. Step number one, find out who the hiring manager is and get their name and use their name. How can you get their name? Well, there's tons of tools out there these days. LinkedIn is one for a start. You can figure it out on Facebook. Worst case scenario, pick up the telephone and call them and say, hey, I'm interested in sending your guy's CV. Who should I address it to? Novel idea, right? And if you happen to already be in that geographical area, drop by, see them in person, hand deliver your CV with your handwritten cover letter. And don't forget to bring coffee. I'm, I'm just kidding about the coffee bar. Or am I? In your cover letter, try to use verbal that they use to describe their dive center so that it shows you're paying attention. And it's these little details that separate the people who get hired from the dear sir or madam, I want to work at your dive center because I love the ocean, straight to trash applicants. And now I'm gonna give you a massive industry secret and shh, don't tell anyone. This is just for you. All dive centers on the entire planet are always hiring all the time, without exception, always hiring. If you are the right person with the right skill set and a positive attitude, you can get that job. I believe in you. Be positive, be professional, manifest your own destiny. You don't have to wait for a dive center to post a vacancy advertisement. It's a transient industry. The trick is to get your CV in before they advertise a vacancy. If you can make that hiring manager's job easy by presenting a professional applicant before they know they need you, gold, you're in, job done. And if it doesn't happen immediately, keep the faith. Stay the course and drop the hiring manager an email every couple of months. Let them know you're still interested. Reattach your CV and just remind them you're still out there and you really want to work for them because that kind of dedication shows you're not a flake. Since we're talking about jobs today, I need to draw your attention to my hat. Uh, Lust for us, this was given to me by a good friend, Pete Mesley, who arguably has one of the coolest jobs in all of diving. So I'll put a link to Pete's stuff in the description of this video below. Check him out. Back to your cover letter. Your cover letter only needs to have two paragraphs. It's that easy. Keep it short, keep it sweet. Paragraph number one, why you're the right candidate to work for that dive center. Number two, why that dive center is right for you to work at. Show them the harmony. And if you do what I said in part one in terms of preparing a professional resume, and then you take these tips on how to approach your dream job, you will be successful, I can promise you. I love hearing these stories, so let me know in the comments below if you landed your dream dive job. How did you stand out from the crowd of, of thousands of other dive instructors. So what I wanted to do with these two videos is put together the idea that congratulations on passing your IE, but it's not enough and you need to do more to stand out from the thousands, literally thousands of other dive instructors who also all want to get their dream job. The very fact that you're watching this video is kudos to you in that you want to stand out from the crowd and you want to learn how to make the best approach with managers like me who have spent their career hiring dive instructors. But what I really want you to think about is for every one dive instructor I hired, I probably read 100 CVs of people I didn't hire. There are that many dive instructors in the world. Please consider to hit that subscribe button and click the little bell icon so you never miss any of our content. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. I hope 
hope this has helped you and inspired you to go after that dream job. If you enjoyed this video, check out some of our other Mouthpiece Mondays here, where I share my opinions on the latest scuba news. My name's James. This was your Divers Ready Mouthpiece Monday for this week. Go out and land that dream job. Dive safe, dive often.